I want to grow and have a million dollar turnover or 200k salary. When you're the biggest earner and you're the business owner and you're running a team and you're a parent and you're a partner and you've got clients and there's all these ands and like that's a heavy weight. But if we're fully booked behind the chair five days of the week, who's running your business? The fastest way to success is... Wait a minute, what's my job supposed to be? When you hire a new salon manager, it should feel like you've replaced yourself. And that can feel highly unusual, actually sometimes uncomfortable. Too often, I see owners sabotage their business growth because they hire a manager and then they manage to take the job back or they resist hiring a manager in the first place. That just means they stay stuck. You can quickly forget about all of the times that you felt stuck in your salon and having to be there for your team, for your clients, while also completely forgetting about like, how the frick am I supposed to grow this business? There's a very clear reason that you need to hire a manager so that you can do all of the things all of those fun things, the shiny new objects, install new strategies that you know will push the business forward. You know, those things that you've been waiting to do actually forever. But for some salon owners, getting to that point of feeling ready to hire a manager and to really truly step into their role as a salon CEO can actually feel scary. So they start to second guess their ability to grow and even second guess the abilities of their newly appointed manager. They can start to question, what is actually my job supposed to be? I'm now unsure that I've got somebody else in this role. I was recently asked a question by a salon owner in our profitable and successful salon owners group. She felt stuck in her business and thought, I would love to answer this question on the podcast so that you can all share the wisdom of like, what actually is my job? What is my job as a salon CEO? So this week, On the Salon Owners Collective podcast, I'm chatting with our Salon Mastery boardroom coach, Joel. He's back on the podcast again. I just wanted to let you know this episode is brought to you by the Salon Mastery boardroom. The boardroom is for salon owners who are making million dollars plus and are ready to grow their business without working more hours. That's because you've got a good manager in place. Okay, let's get on to the episode and let's chat with Joel. Welcome to the Salon Owners Collective podcast. Joel, welcome. Really pleased to have you here. Great to be here, Riz. Uh, For those that don't know who you are, who are you, Joel? Where do you live? (laughs) What do you do? (laughs) I'm Joel. I live in Wellington with my beautiful family, two kids and my wife. And uh, I'm a coach uh, at Salon Owners Collective. And in particular, I help those owners that are kind of in that leader phase um, and they're wanting to grow. Uh, to move closer towards what we call becoming a salon CEO. And so that's me every day of the week. Love it. So Joel's whole goal is to turn salon owners into million dollar business owners. Great goal. Love that. So, hey, Joel, uh, I got an email from one uh, salon owner who reached out and she kind of was like a bit of an SOS. I, I thought this was a really good topic. I want to read it to you and let's give us some advice. What do you reckon? Okay, cool. Okay, she said, hey, Larissa, there are six of us in the business. However, I'm the biggest earner and struggling to manage the day-to-day of the business. My salon has been established for 45 years, and we have always struggled to really push the business forward without me. So, a really good problem. Um, One of the challenges, I think, when the business is completely revolved around you is that it can feel a little bit like a ball and chain around your ankle. And I think that this is what this owner is feeling. And um, that's frustrating. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. I almost think like, you know, when you've got so much going on, uh, it's almost like you've got the blinkers on, you know, like the the horse and the horse race, and you can only see what you can see. Like, I'm busy. I'm doing a great job. We've got a great brand. There's a lot that's going well. But when I sit back on a Saturday night and I think about my business, yeah, it's it's not moving forward. I'm just doing what's in front of me. Yeah, there's something that feels really stagnant about doing the same thing over and over again and nothing actually changing. Like we can get a bit fidgety or we can get a bit frustrated and it's like just same shit, different day. 
Yeah, and it's not like the intent isn't positive or you're not working really, really hard. It's just that, as you say, time goes on, but nothing really changes. And gosh, I'd almost put that into the category of survival. Like you're doing what's required to survive, which for a lot of people, that's success. But for maybe this person, maybe the the SOS or the call out was like, maybe I'm sick of it. Maybe I'm over it. Maybe I'm sick of not moving forward. Yeah, and feeling like the roadblock, like there's a sense there of of like we've been around for a long time, 45 years, like that's a long legacy business, and we've struggled to push the business forward without me. So the business owner becomes the bottleneck, and I know for me, I have experienced this many times in my own journey with this, owning the salon, um, and now even with Salon Owners Collective, if there's ever a bottleneck in the business, it's me, always me. Um, And so we see this too, right, Joel, when we're working with owners, like when there's a bottleneck in the business and there's a growth ceiling or, you know, we're just on Groundhog Day, it's always the business owner. The business owner is the bottleneck. Agree. Yep, I agree, 100%. And that would be really important to eventually when you reach out to this particular person, like having a conversation about that. Because until we can look in the mirror and acknowledge that um, and confront those brutal facts that maybe I am and I'm curious enough and willing enough to go, if it was me, if I was the bottleneck, what could I do different assuming I want a different result? Yes. Um, The saying goes, if I do the same thing every day and expect a different result, then isn't that the definition of insanity? Definitely crazy. (laughs) Something like that. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you know, one thing I'll just add in here, like you and me, Russ, we see here and talk to people every single day that are pouring it out, like for their families, um, you know, for their communities, for their clients, for their team, they're pouring it out. And I think everyone that chooses to do that, first of all, hats off to you, like respected, appreciated member of the community of society. We want you to win. We want the net result of this many days multiplied, not to just equal, I paid the bills. Like, it's got to be about more than that. So I feel for this lady. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's easy to get into, um, if you're not moving forward, actually you're moving backwards and and slowly things just start to deteriorate. All right. Well, let's help this lovely lady. Um, What's the first step, do you think, Joel? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, So you said she's always struggled to push forward, um, or the business, sorry, has struggled to push forward without her. So if I was talking to her or working with her, the first thing I'd want to understand is what is forward? Like if she could wave a magic wand and go, I've got this, but I want that. (laughs) What's, What's the want? Like does she want a million dollar turnover? Does she want a higher profit margin? Does she want a profit? Does she want a team that's like, oh, I just, I look at them, I see them, I walk in and there's there's such a sense of we've got each other's back. Is that what she's after? Is it about her brand? Is it about her getting off the tools? Maybe it's more about that, um, making that transition out of being in. So you really want to get really clear about what it is that forward means for her. Yeah, I agree. You can't arrive at a destination if you don't know what the destination is. I suspect for this owner, it's a little bit around getting free of um, being the biggest earner. Do you know, like, because then the business is heavy upon her. Do you know, um, when you're the biggest earner and you're the business owner and you're running a team and you're a parent and you're a partner and you've got clients and there's all these ands and like, that's a heavy weight. And so I'm reading between the lines of the conversation that we're having via email and saying, for the for the purpose of this conversation, in any case, let's get rid of the weight and free her somewhat. Like if you've been running a business for 45 years, you probably, and being the person that has all the ands, you're probably a little bit tired. Freedom. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, as you are rattling off all of those roles, like I felt exhausted. <laughs> Um, yeah, me too. And I think one of the roles that, like, just while we're adding lots of roles, like, in addition to 
incredible hairstylist or beauty therapist, like she's on the floor, right? She can't get free. Why don't we add also the role of world-class business owner, you know, salon CEO, incredible leader? Because like we're already at capacity, right? And I think that's a different focus. It's a different thought process. It's the very thing that we teach um, to help salon owners break free, free from being in and move to being on. Agree. Okay, so goal number one is recognize actually what stage of business that you're in. There are uh, four stages of business and what you need to do and how you need to behave inside of your business, the projects you work on, the role that you have in your business, all is determined by the stage and phase of business that you're in. And I can see for this salon owner, she's a bit stuck between two phases and that's why the wheels are wobbling. Um, so there are four. I want to just touch on those quickly so you can come along the journey, um, salon owner listener. Um, so number one is the operator phase and the operator is the primary income generating person and probably has one or two team members. So we're new at um, employing people and primarily used to being the central person in the business. When you start a business, the first goal is to build a clientele and it's all revolved around you. You want to build clientele, you want to build a reputation, clients come for you, but at some point you hit capacity. And that's when we think, oh, let's employ somebody. They can share the clients. Um, but at some point, if we want to go beyond one or two team members, once we get into four team members plus the whole dynamic changes, you can't catch people in the hallway anymore and have conversation conversations and have that tight-knit team. The dynamics change because the size of the team changes. And so the emphasis for the owner is we've got to come out of operator and step into manager and learn the strategies and the tactics to manage a group of people. So anywhere between four and eight people, you've got to implement systems and processes, management systems and processes, create career pathways that can uh, help you manage a group of growing people. And the challenge for this owner, Joel, is that she's stuck between the two. She's got six people. That's a reasonable amount of people, like one manager can manage up to eight people effectively. And when you're fully booked on the floor and you've got six people to manage, like you've got two jobs, instantly got two jobs. And so she's stuck between the two levels. And what we want to do is to get her out of operator, effective at manager so she can step into the leader role. And as a leader, if you don't, if you haven't stepped out of operator, if you haven't solved the management cadence and the management systems and pro, uh, processes and culture and the manager level, if you start to get to eight in the team, then you actually start to lose really good, profitable operators because there's nowhere to take them. And we need to, in the, in the leader level, become a really inspired, forward-thinking leader it's now your leadership and your ability to inspire people that is going to take you to the next level. And you've got to get through the leader level to get to the million dollar mark when you come at, become a true salon CEO, when you can really the goal for a salon CEO is to get out of daily operations, not just out of doing clients, um, but out of daily operations. So you can really step into that visionary role. Um, I just want to say though, you don't have to, and we're not advocating that you have to stop clients completely because I totally understand that we love our clients. But if we're fully booked behind the chair five days of the week, who's running your business? Hey, I just wanted to jump in and interrupt this episode. It's a good episode, right? But really quick, thank you again for joining me on the podcast. I just have one question for you. Do you ever feel stuck in a cycle of two steps forwards, two steps back? I know I did for a long time. And that no matter what you do to try and grow the business, there's always a roadblock that just gets in your way. Well, it's time for you to develop your leadership team so that your business can grow. It can grow without it only being revolved around you and without you working more hours just to make it pull together. I want to get you out of being stuck in daily operations. It's time for you to have a little bit more fun and make a little bit more money. I have a couple of strategies. I have a couple of strategies for you I would love to share with you so I know I can help. What I want to do is invite you to join me on a complimentary strategy call. 
We're going to discuss your business, your role inside of the business. Tell me a little bit about who your team are. Let's see if I'm the right person to help you grow to the million dollar mark. All you need to do is click in the link I've left for you in the show notes of this episode. Book a time. Let's jump on a strategy call together. That's just what I wanted to come in and say. Let's get back to the conversation with Joel. Back to the episode. What I was, when I, as you were talking through those those levels, Russ, I kind of see it like a like a ladder. Like you got the manager, then yeah. And what one of the things that I was hearing, you tell me if this is on point or not, is that you can like have a great brand and deliver great services and actually grow and increase your team and be really busy, but not develop these systems and processes. And it can actually cause you to be really stuck. Maybe like how this lady is, is like, we've been in business for 45 years. We're actually really sought after. We deliver great service and I'm stuck. I can't get off the floor. And it's like, she's going up the ladder in terms of staff members, but maybe hasn't paid enough attention to the actual things that are going to allow her business to grow. This is why she's stuck at, um, there's a ceiling now on how much she can grow because she hasn't implemented some of those foundational things. One of those things actually is that the business has revolved around her and she feels like she can't get off the floor because the brand is around her, her name, her reputation, and probably a little bit of her self, uh, what's the word, self-worth or you know how she recognizes the significance it gives her. Um, and yeah, I, I, there's some, that needs to happen so she can jump out of the ceiling that she's in. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, totally makes sense. Yeah. And I think part of that's about just that personal evolution, like, uh, maybe understanding that if I have a goal and I want to, let's just use the, the marker of a million dollar turnover. If I want to get there answering the question, can I do this on my own or do I actually need a team of rock stars to get there? That's probably a good question to answer, you know. And if the answer is the latter, which by the way it is, <laughs> if the answer is the latter, then that's going to shift and change our focus. We're going to stop signing off the newsletter from Joel, kiss, kiss, and it might be more about from SOC and the rock stars at SOC as an example. I agree. Yeah. And um, to that kind of personal point, the significant come, significance, personal significance comes from owning a business and a brand, not from being the business and the brand, uh, which is where this lovely person is stuck. And then if you're going to build a team of rock stars, and especially if you want to go from six people to eight, 10 people, then really building not just a bunch of stylists or therapists, um, but some kind of career pathway. And one of those really significant roles that is going to create freedom or create movement um, or momentum and growth again and get out of stuck is actually probably getting a manager in place and sharing the load, especially if you're wanting to continue to do a few clients yourself and sharing the load, the workload of what it actually takes to get back into growth momentum. Mm, yeah. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah, 100%. Like, uh, it, yeah. If the goal was I'm stuck at six and I want to grow and have a million dollar turnover or 200k salary or whatever the whatever the thing is, um, then answering that question, um, th then then getting a the manager rather is certainly going to be a useful consideration and maybe a really good pathway to take. I think so because otherwise, what's going to happen if you get stuck at that stage too long is you start to lose good people because there's no ascension for them, there's no future for them. People will always leave you when they run out of future. And so actually bringing in a manager to help, I guess it's like putting petrol in the car, Joel, do you know, and get the motor going again and sort of driving forward. Um, that would be a good reason to have a manager. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, what's that saying when the cat's away, the mice will play? Like people will, generally speaking, like people want to be inspired. Like we know that. Like they walk into work and they want to be inspired. And part of that is making sure that there is some form of inspiration, management, leadership that's saying, hey, you guys do epic work over here. And let's keep in mind these values, this vision, our client service, et cetera, et cetera. And as the potential owner begins to step back and focus on building 
the business. It's so, so important that someone fulfills that, that front-facing role, uh, that, that management role. Yeah, even just, that's right, just even taking care of daily operations, client complaints, do team turn up on time, running the morning huddle, um, just that, I guess the first role was that sort of floor manager looking after what's happening out on the floor um, and the client care would be like number one and that really frees the owner to step into growth mode. And when they do that, that's the petrol metaphor you shared before, right? Because then they start growing it and then they start to experience success on a completely different level. So instead of working 45 hours delivering five-star services to clients, all of a sudden success is starting to get measured in a different way. You start to empower your manager who empowers your team. And all of a sudden, hard work is now outperformed in, in your psychology by making world-class decisions, like sell on CEO decisions. Like that's the fastest way to success is not working harder, doing more clients. It's making really good decisions. Yeah, and you know what? To make good decisions, you actually need space, like mental space. I call it white space. You can't, when you're in the weeds, you can't see the big picture. You lose sight of that. And to be able to look at your uh, your business, it's almost like you've got to come out of your own goldfish bowl and look at it a little bit more holistically. And when you're stuck in that goldfish bowl, you're just going around like a goldfish yeah. with a, with a two-second memory. <laughs> 100%. Like, yeah, it's, it's that, if we can just acknowledge, can we just all acknowledge, like, we've got blind spots. We all do. We know that from driving our cars and changing lanes. Like, there's often a blind spot in our day-to-day -day driving. It's the same in terms of our business acumen, our desire for growth, like we've got blind spots. That's why people have coaches. That's why people have mentors. That's why people have masterminds. They connect with acquaintances and that having this conversational wisdom and all of a sudden there's this insight. It's like, oh, I could do that. But what if you didn't have the time to do that stuff? What if you were just hit down the goldfish in the bowl going round and round and round? Is it possible that you could miss out on the decision or decisions they could transform your business and get you out of being stuck into being free. Yeah, getting um, out of the day-to-day -day implementation, the daily operations, and into strategic thinking, inspirational thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of the... I was just going to say, you know, like for a lot of people, I would imagine, like if you're at manager or operator level, as we teach for us, like, that could be scary, you know, like, I, I know what I know. I know here. I know skin. I know people. And you say strategic thinking. I go, oh, that's exactly why you need the space to realize that it's actually not something that's so hard you can't pick it up. You know, you surround yourself with other people that are thinking big. You surround yourself with other people that are dealing with people problems. You surround yourself with other people that are also elevating their salaries it becomes pretty easy pretty quick. I guess the thing is that the the answers are available and if you don't know them, it's just that you don't know them. It's not that you can't do it or that you shouldn't do it um, because I think otherwise we get stuck in the belief that it doesn't work and to this, this kind of point it's like we've always struggled to push the business forward without me. Like that's a belief that it's not possible. Of course it's possible. There are plenty of million dollar businesses. There are plenty of absent owners from the business and the business is still growing. Not that that has to be the goal. There are plenty of businesses that have hundreds of teams and hundreds of salons. It's possible. Yeah, we work with them just, every day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we know it's possible because we're hanging out with them. Um, so I guess I want to offer that belief that like, if you can see that somebody's doing it as possible, you just have to work out how. Yeah. Yeah, and just on that, like one of the things that's really important, and I've seen this in human psychology over the last 20 years, is when we're like, okay, it is possible. Then we go, okay, well, I'll try it. I'll get a manager. But we don't have the goal first. We haven't committed to, I want and am committed to and do will do whatever it takes to achieve this goal. And part of the process of that is you know, moving up the phases and at the right time bringing in the manager instead I'll just, I'll, and it's sabotage, right? It's like, I'll get the manager and I've got a manager now, I'm paying them and I kind of 
walk the other way and I kind of leave them be. And then it doesn't work out. And I go, see, told you, it doesn't work without me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And there's a little bit of ego attached to that, right back to that significance. It's like, you know, um, I'm needed. I remember, Joel, when the first time I felt the sort of pang of, they don't need me. What what do I, what, where do I fit now? Like I remember that moment. And um, it was one of my managers who had told me she'd made a decision, she'd implemented the decision, and it had worked out really well. She was just telling me afterwards. And I was like, oh, oh. But at the same time, like I took a moment to feel that. And then I was like, no, this is good. This is the whole goal, of course. But I was aware that now I was mis- displaced and I had to find myself a new purpose, a new role. And that's exciting for me because I love to go and look for a new role and new exciting things because I get to do the fun, shiny new stuff. Don't worry, I, I filled that space pretty quick. Um, but I think that can hold people back, right? Like, well, what if you do that? What's my job? I have to get comfortable in the whites, the whites, the comfortable in the empty and the change because if you start to have a manager and they start to take over those things and be effective and you support them to be effective, then there's this uncomfortable space while you work out what to do next or what is the growth strategy or what is the next stage and phase. Um, but I think celebrate that. Like that's progress. It's progress. And If displacement like that isn't happening multiple times in your career, then, you know, you probably have to some extent and, you know, it's safe, signed up for stagnation a little bit, you know, like of all of those four stages that you talked about before, like for everyone, they go through this stage and then there's displacement. It's like, so what's my role now? And it's a little bit scary, but we figure it out. We work together and we redefine the identity from from manager to operator, from operator to leader, from leader to sell on CEO. And as we go up, I mean, it's the same same question every day. Like, if I do this, then what do I do? But that's the exciting bit. Like, go and work out. Go and find out what is now in the leader stage. What should I be focusing on? In our model, Joel, do you know how we have the stages and phases actually drawn out in in, um, a progressive model? There's quite a significant but important white line between each of the stages, and that kind of signifies the white space and they're like, okay, well, I've given away that role now and I've progressed past that, and there's a bit of uncomfortableness, and people can either get stuck in that uncomfortableness and sabotage and go back and take back the job that they just gave away to their manager or to their front of house or to whatever, Um, or as we like to lead them towards, okay, now you're back to the beginning and you need to learn new skills um, and get comfortable with being new again and in the learning phase. I find that exciting, but if you're not used to that, it can be scary. Yeah. And growth is scary because you're essentially stepping into the unknown. And the paradox is it's the very thing that you know we get to the end of the day and we look back on the day or the week or the month or the year and we're like, Without being egocentric, we're like pretty proud of what we've achieved when we choose to climb the ladder, to keep stepping into the unknown and ask for help and ask for questions, ask questions. Like it's such a cool journey. Yeah. Reattaching significance to a new outcome. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, as we think about wrapping up this episode, honestly, Joe, we could talk for hours, um, but I really wanted to share that... um, we're running a workshop in the Successful and Profitable Salon Owners Facebook group, uh, motivating salon managers, empowering our managers, and liberating owners. And liberating is, you know, whether it's just the next stage and phase of growth. So that's being run on the 22nd of May. We would love you to join us and um, we'll see you in the group. Joel, thank you for leading the leaders and building salon CEOs and Thank you for joining us on the podcast and we'll be back same time, same place next week. Thanks, Russ. Thanks, Joel. Ciao for now. Ciao. Thanks for joining me, Joel. I love our episodes together. Uh, We really could actually talk for hours. Right, how did you find this episode? I hope you feel more confident in thinking about the transition between operator to manager into leader when you start to think about hiring a manager and of course becoming a true salon CEO. I know it feels daunting, you know, stepping out of daily operations, but I promise you, your business will grow because of it. 
So it's time to leave your ego at the door and that feeling of like, well, what am I supposed to do if she takes over my role and let your manager manage? So you don't have to. It's time for you to do, get back into doing some of those fun things, those shiny objects that you've been waiting to do. You know that list, that never get round to list, that you know that if you actually did, your business would actually grow. But you've never had time to pick them up until now. What I would love to know is, what do you think about me answering more salon owner questions on the podcast? Maybe this is a good regular thing I should do. I know that when Joel and I are on the podcast and we have a good conversation, I know that I always get good feedback from our listeners, more salon owners. And so if you want me to do that more, then please feel free to leave your questions in the Profitable and Successful Salon Owners Facebook group. I would love to answer your questions because I actually think that would be quite a fun thing to do. That's all from me. Thanks again, Joel. Appreciate you coming on the podcast. Thanks for joining me on the Salon Owners Collective podcast. Until next time, same time, same place next week. Ciao for now.